and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today we have two wonderful guests and the title of our show is APEC and its importance to Israel. And to make this possible today, I have a wonderful guest <laughs> again, Rabbi. This is Rabbi Michael Schwab, who is the uh, rabbi at North Suburban Synagogue Beth El, and our own Annette Feller. Mm -hmm. And Annette Feller is not only a congregant of Beth El Synagogue, but she's also one of the senior producer uh, crew. And um, we finally got you on the show because Thank normally you're behind a camera or behind the CG or something and you finally got you on the show. My pleasure. But when you said when you heard the rabbi was going to come on and that right away wanted to be with the rabbi. Very sweet of you. <laughs> and one of the reasons she wanted to be with the rabbi is because they both went to the APAC conference this year. And um, we're going to talk about APAC and what, a, what about APAC, but I want to tell you a little bit about Rabbi Michael Schwab. Michael, Rabbi Schwab is currently in his ninth year at the North Suburban Synagogue Bethel in Highland Park, and he serves as the president of the Chicago Region Rabbinical Assembly. And APEC, there were scores of rabbis across all over the United States in the effort to promote pro-Israel activism within their synagogues and movements. Religious leaders are strongly supporting the work of APEC, which is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, and are urging their congregants, like Annette, to get involved. Today we will explore why our guests support this pro-Israel movement and what APEC is all about. And I think the person to address that in the beginning would be our rabbi. So tell our viewers a little bit, what is APEC and why did you get involved with APEC? Sure. First of all, I want to thank you for having me on the show, especially with Annette. This is going to be a lovely experience and I'm very happy to be here. So um, I'm happy to tell you how I got involved with APEC and why it's such an important organization. Um, Originally, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't really know too much about APEC, and uh, it wasn't actually until I became a rabbi that I actually got very involved. And over the years, um, I've tried to find different ways to support the modern state of Israel um, for various reasons. I think Israel is um, a key focus and center for the Jewish people. And we've been praying for thousands of years to return to the state of Israel. And we see that it's a miracle that in 1948 we now have the land of Israel and there are Jews in the country. It's a thriving democracy. It shares values with the United States on all sorts of levels. And I've always been striving to support it. And in the past I've done so educationally. I've done so by visiting. I've done so by teaching about the religious texts. Mm -hmm. And I've even given charity, tzedakah money, over to certain groups over in Israel. But it wasn't until I became a rabbi that I realized how important of a role APAC played in supporting Israel. The, um, the foreign aid budget from the United States mm -hmm. to Israel is over $3 billion. And there is no way of supporting Israel monetarily that can compare to that kind of money that goes over to Israel. And in addition, there's all sorts of other support that the United States of America gives to Israel on a public policy scene um, in the world diplomatic venue. And Israel needs to be with allies, needs to stand, and it's in a particular area of the world where there are not always good feelings towards Israel, and it really needs a strong supporter. And I felt APAC was the only address and the unique address to help Israel have that kind of support. And uh, therefore, I started to get extremely involved in APAC. That's, that's good, because I know that APAC, somehow APAC, um, um, Israel has not marketed itself too well. I mean, as far as we hear about Israel and, the, and we get the neg negativity, you know, that uh, maybe that in the United States, why are they supporting Israel all the time? What, you know, and Israel so, I mean, a lot of the research, um, in fact, our cell phones, which I asked you both to turn off your cell phones, and we have to keep our cell phones, cell phones were developed in Israel. And also, my son, who does live in Israel, who is a physician, he's a general surgeon, and a lot of people don't know that my son doesn't just operate on Israelis. He operates from people of uh, Hamas. He, oper he operates uh, with people that are in the, the Fatah. He yeah. operates with, with uh, Arabs as well as Israelis. And uh, they, they do not get credit for it. You know, they don't know 
that he doesn't differentiate and say, well, I can't, or I can't do your gallbladder because you're from the Fatah party or you're from the Hamas party. You know, he operates because they're sick and they need help, and Israel does not get promoted. And we want today, our program is basically to help promote and market Israel a little bit and show the positives at APAC and what, what Israel, you know, that we're going to promote it a little bit and tell a little bit about what Israel, what, we, what has been done, you know, the United, not only from the United States, but what Israel does for the United States. And one thing I'm going to get back to, I'll get back to you um, in just a second, but you said something about uh, Israel gives back the money. You told me we were talking earlier. Yeah. What a lot of people don't understand is, is that most of the foreign aid that goes to Israel is in the form of contracts that Israel takes out and they give the Israel the money to then reinvest in the United States. Israel is on the cutting edge of almost everything scientific, including military. Um, and therefore, they develop a lot of the structures, the software, the weapons technology. They develop all sorts of medical technologies, little pill cams that go inside of you. They're even right now developing something that for those who are illegally blind, you can't obviously be completely blind, but they are giving sight back to the blind, um, developing certain things. And it, there's unbelievable things going on there. Israel doesn't have the manufacturing capabilities, the ability to replicate. So what they do is they develop the technologies they get the foreign aid from uh, the United States. They reinvest all that money and hire firms in the United States to produce all of these unbelievable technologies en masse, some of which which is shared by the United States and its allies. And this is particularly true around military ventures, where the United, uh, Israel will develop certain technologies, uh, military technologies, and then the United States will develop those technologies with the money that the Israel has been given. So they're just not taking the money. No, there's jobs that are created <laughs> and all sorts of uh, industries that are created in the United States. Almost all of the money gets replanted back in the United States. Mm -hmm. So it's taken from the United States government, given to the Israeli government, but then given back to the American people. Excuse me, I yeah. think they give back 74% of what we give them. 75%. Right. And, mm -hmm. and what, what, and that how did you get involved in APAC? And how did you, you know, besides being a congregant, and I'm sure the well, rabbi kind of influenced you. Well, it's, it's interesting that my daughter and my granddaughter both are members of APAC. And they used to talk about going to the APAC conventions. And then it wasn't until Brian Aronson came to speak at North Suburban Bethel that I attended the uh, meeting and I saw why they go to the conventions. I mean, it's so important uh, to support Israel that I got involved, and I've been going to the conventions for the past three years. It is a wonderful group. It, uh, it's a lobbyist group that's pro-Israel, uh, pro -pol uh, their policies mm -hmm. uh, to uh, Congress and to the executive board from the United States. Their mission is to ensure that Israel be strong and safe and secure. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to be involved. I think we brought some pictures. Um, uh, do we have some pictures of who attends? Uh, is it, do you have that with you right now? Well, as soon as they put it down, we will, we will uh, show it. When I start seeing it, then uh, we will. We will bring it down. So, as soon as I see them popped on the screen, we'll talk more about who goes to APAC. And I, um, one of the things that um, uh, that we do have, I, in fact, I would like to go to. I, I've never been to an APAC meeting. I never really um, realized how much was being promoted of uh, the different. Uh, Congress people that come to the APEC until I got this book and I was uh, reading this and I was kind of surprised by the different courses that have been offered through APEC. Yeah, do you mind if I say a few words? Sure, today? absolutely, because um, I want you to tell, this is the book that I see right now is called, um, it, you know, it's called Shaping Tomorrow Together. Okay, do you see that? And in there is, oh my God, hundreds of workshops and, and um, hundreds of workshops that are in this particular book and um I, you know, and I maybe I can okay. explain. Okay. I'll talk to the rabbi first, and okay. maybe the rabbi can give us a little bit about the different courses and 
and first of all, how do you get the senators and Congress people, how do you get them uh, to come to this APAC meeting? And a lot of times you hear, oh, if, you, if you're bothered by something, call your senator, call your congressman. And I never thought it would work, you know, because, right. you know, you start calling your local people, you never can get, a, get in touch with them. But somehow in APAC, how do you get those people to come? Well, uh, okay, I'll start there. Um, yeah. I think that what what needs to be understood is, is that in the United States of America, actually, Israel's image enjoys a, a great popularity overall. And m most people do support Israel. And they support Israel for, for basic reasons, which is, is that the United States and Israel share the same democratic and pluralistic values. Mm -hmm. um, we protect minorities, we protect religious freedoms, we protect freedom of the press in, in the United States and in Israel. Um, and it's the only democracy or true democracy in that region, and it has always been a democracy from its inception. And the United States has always seen strategic value in having a presence in Israel. Um, whether it's military or global political strategy, it's very important to the United States. The United States' uh, its presence in Israel and Israel's presence in the world has often protected the United States from having to perform the, uh, military actions of their own, protecting United States citizens, and they make such statements all the time. Um, between militaries, one to the other. And so, so how therefore... Did, so how did they get the Congress people therefore, to attend? Well, what I'm trying to say is this, therefore it's very easy. It's very easy for a United States congressman, it's very easy for a United States senator to stand with Israel and to vote for things. There was just a resolution passed 99 to 0. 99 to 0 in the Senate. Um, supporting Israel, supporting Israel's right to defend itself, and supporting further sanctions on Iran um, in Israel and the Western world's defense. In a partisan political era, 99 to 0 is unheard of. Um, and this just shows you, so when AIPAC says we want to do a, uh, a conference and we want you to come and show your support of Israel and be there, this is a no-brainer for most congressmen. If they come to the APAC policy conference, they get a chance and exposure right. to thousands of voters. They get right. publicity mm -hmm. um, on an issue that is unifying that almost all their constituents support. Um, they believe in the cause. They believe in the relationship. And they also believe in the political clout that pro-Israel lobby has and the pro-Israel movement has, whether they're members of APAC or they're not members of APAC. And so therefore, we, we, we get a, a great deal. When we have uh, at the policy conference each year, they have two-thirds to three-quarters of the entire US Congress present for the banquet evening. And they usually have some major figure from the administration. This past year, it was Vice President Biden. The year before, it was the President of the United Obama? States, President yes. Obama. Yeah. And in the past, uh, other great uh, members, Hillary Clinton has uh, spoken to the, to the conference before as the headliner. All these different folks have uh, come to APAC and been able to share their great... Uh, and Prime Minister yeah. Netanyahu always yeah. yeah. shows up. Yeah. Do, we have, do we have those pictures yet? Well, when we get the pictures, we'll show them. Uh, I, I wanted you mention about the course catalog. I just yes. want to share when a, a oh person God, goes, when a person goes to the APAC policy conference, they get access. It's almost like an Israel university. Um, you get access to all the great experts, American, foreign. Um, you get them academic. You get them from the policy side. Okay. Congressional okay. leaders, diplom mm -hmm. diplomats from all sorts of countries. You have Christian ministers, right. you have uh, uh, Muslims, all sorts of folks who are who are there and who are presenting on every aspect of the America-Israel relationship. Yeah, process. in fact, I just put down Israel is not just an issue of concern to the Jewish community. Faithful Christians across the United States are expressing support for Israel, and in recent years, growing numbers, especially among evangelical Christians, have become involved oh. in advocacy on behalf of the U.S.-Israel relationship, and they're coming to support APAC uh, and uh, to uh, the APAC conference. And my neighbor, who is a, a great sure. evangelical, sure. she is so pro-Israel. Oh, here comes, oh, here we got, we got uh, the Netanyahu, Netanyahu uh, the Prime Minister of Israel. Israel. There he mm -hmm. is. There, he's he spoke at the conference, conference uh, three years now. Right. The, last time, this was uh, last year. Uh, he this year he spoke via teleconference. And we have another picture he's, too. He's, we have another he's picture such a, coming up too. An elegant speaker. And there's uh, Vice President Biden. Right. Mm -hmm. There he is. In, in, uh, in, the, in the flesh this year. Yes. Uh, 
and Obama was there last year. Right. And do we have any other pictures? Oh my God, there he is. McCain. There's Senator McCain. Every year we've been blessed that um, the leaders of both the Senate and the Congress from both the Democrats and Republican side have all addressed uh, the conference. And I want to make one and, thing clear and, about yeah. APAC is that it is completely bipartisan. Mm -hmm. It enjoys both in its own membership, uh, APAC uh, membership. Uh, what, what Cute but I wanted to finish that comment because it's very important. Thank to you, you which for is the picture. You're welcome. Um, uh, it's bipartisan both in the in the, in the makeup of APAC's membership and in the support it enjoys from the Congress itself. Yes, and you know, and I, and I we mentioned about the Christians. I, the um, my friend is evangelical, and she uh, is so pro-Israel, and she's been attending the APAC conference, and um, you know, she really, really enjoyed it, and gave her a better insight about the Jewish people. And let, let me ask you something. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> I know you're very <laughs> <I'm really laughs> to tell. Um, I just wanted to ask you, did you learn something, being that, you know, it, something, did you learn something that you didn't know about, you know, what was happening in APAC, or, or, or you didn't know that you learned from APAC? Well, first of all, uh, APAC is a wonderful organization. The convention itself is three days. Two days are for specific, uh, where they focus on what's important to Israel. So you can open up this book and you can see there's topics, various topics, whether it's Syria, Iran, and we discuss them. Whatever is uh, threaten, threatening Israel, we discuss and you come away with this feeling that you want to help. Um, the other two days, well, those were the two days, but the third day, we go up to Capitol Hill. So the delegates go up to Capitol Hill and they speak to their Congress people. And if there's any re uh, resolutions on the table, we try to get them to show them that we're behind these resolutions and normally, I say nine out of ten. They always support these resolutions. Are they pretty up? I mean, are they up front? And if they say, do they ever tell you that I would like to support the resolution, but in this time I cannot do no, it? Is there, is there any? Well, other, occasionally, we find that uh, there are folks that have different concerns. Um, that are bigger than just the Israel concern, like the foreign aid bill is voted in as a package, and that is not, they don't individually vote on foreign aid to Israel, they vote on the foreign aid bill, which is the foreign aid that the United States gives to every country in the world that we give to. And therefore, somebody might vote against the foreign aid bill, not because of anything to do with Israel, because they don't like the allocation that's been given to Egypt or you know, Venezuela or something like that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they say we would like to support, but we can't, and we have a specific reason, and it's usually because they're leading on a particular issue that means something to them that has nothing to do with Israel, or they have a particular concern that has nothing to do with Israel. But by and large, um, all of these, we get a lot of positive responses from people. What are your concerns? Do you have any concerns about Israel right now? Oh, oh yes. Yes. Um, the yes. So I want to say two things. Okay. I want to say, first of all, that on the positive side of things, what's wonderful about going to the policy conference is not only um, to hear and become educated about the challenges or threats to Israel, which I want to talk about in a second, because you just asked me about that. I also want to make clear that we spend a lot of time um, speaking about all the positive things that Israel is doing in the world, the way that they're helping you know, other countries through agriculture. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, okay. Ethiopia was uh, highlighted in this particular conference. Israeli experts going around the world. They talk about all the technologies that are created that help people. For example, there are these body suits that they've created for uh, veterans who have been wounded right. um, that the United States is now using, that they're paralyzed or partially uh, paralyzed. And now these folks, they can walk and they can function because of the great Israeli technology that's now being marketed across the world, and in particular for veterans that are just outstanding and amazing. And it's for the United States as well. Yeah, we're going to purchase right. the technology, to be honest with you. Um, and that's the thing, Israel's innovations are spreading throughout the world. And it, of course, is on these things like cell phones and other technological innovations that are, are with us in our daily lives. But then there are also particular things that are really helpful for healthcare, quality of life, length of life, 
you know, in kind of these particular areas that I think everybody can appreciate. And, you know, also they they do a lot of humanitarian aid, and Israel has been one of the first responders in Africa. For sure. That was, uh -huh. A lot of people don't know, but these are things mm -hmm. that I, we're here but to market even, Israel. Even, I don't know what's wrong with the marketing this. people Same. there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sandy, so too, but just what happened in Boston after uh -huh. the terrorism. Yes. Who do you think was on the ground helping with uh, mm -hmm. um, this, a lot of the therapy and the trauma victims? Mm -hmm. It was Israeli teams that came on. Unfortunately, they specialize yeah. in trauma, and they sent folks right over from. To you know, it's interesting that you said that. Did I, I did not hear. Did you hear on one media show, on, on one television show, uh, whatever show? I did not hear about that. Did you hear that? That um, Israel. I don't know why. They put it down. They, they don't even mention that, and that's really, really important. And that's why I have the show, by the way. Uh, my show is always. I always try to tell. I invite guests to come on the show, and we try to hit things that nobody has mentioned before on their television show or their radio show. And that's why I try to get the show. That's why I'm here, basically, yeah. to get the information out that no other show seems to do. Right. And I think that is important. They're first responders, and I think that is extremely important. Right. And you mentioned about the threats. I mean, you asked me about the threats. Israel is surrounded by countries that are oh, yes. hostile to it. Okay. Um, this is interesting because a lot of people, um, do, they do not know. Here is Israel, right? This little circle right little here. Orange. This little orange circle, which is right over here. Oh, that's true. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then look at, you could show the different countries because well, around a, it. You have Egypt is on a border here through the Sinai. You have Syria, and they, don't, they barely even show that Lebanon here, but Lebanon to the north. Um, then there's Jordan um, over here, but right next to Jordan you also have Iraq, and Iran is not too far away. They don't highlight it, but you have Turkey, you have Saudi Arabia, and so on and so look forth. At and look at this little country. Look at this little country. It's like if we're, we're in Chicago, and we were talking about it earlier, we're here in Illinois, Chicago, and we're surrounded by Indiana, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And what if those were our, our enemies? Right. And here we are, sitting in a little a little thing like that, and we're surrounded. And that's what Israel is. It's surrounded by Hezbollah, Hamas, yes. and all the terrorists. Right. Yes. All around it. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? And this little country is, is, is they, it's, it, I cannot believe how much, you know, you know, how much, Things yeah. that it, it, if you'd like, I can outline it for you. It's, well, that's okay. Uh, want to. Well, that's okay. We could talk, but but I just wanted to to mention that you know here's this little country that they're making. They have to. They should share it. They should do this. They should do. That. It's just a little piece of land. And look at all the land. We'll go back to it. Look at all the land that Saudi Arabia has, Jordan has, Egypt has, Libya has. Okay. But can I, mean, I just say the larger the, there's yes. a larger point here. The larger point is not how much lands the comparison is, but that each of the countries on Israel border Israel's borders right now are destabilized and they have large terrorist elements inside them. Mm -hmm. If when, when we were if we were dealing with stable countries, mm -hmm. that even if you know underneath they didn't really love that Israel was there, but you were dealing with open diplomatic channels, you were dealing with sane rational leaders. You know, Israel did okay. There was a time period where they were at at least a cold peace with most of its partners. Right now, if you look at the region, you have Lebanon is really not a real state anymore. It's just a bunch of terrorist groups, mostly uh, run by Hezbollah. You have Syria, which is a humanitarian crisis on the highest level of scales. There's arms all over the place, open terrorist groups. Um, you have, and Iran is uh, basically supplying a lot of uh, Syria. You have Jordan, which is taking all these Syrian refugees in and is very destabilized. And therefore you have in Egypt, which is under pretty much yeah, complete right. economic collapse right. now as right. a jihadist government. Right. Israel has a lot of problems all around. And so therefore it has some serious, serious challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's why the America-Israel alliance is a huge help for Israel, but it's also a help for America because it helps to stabilize the region. Mm -hmm. exactly. And the United States exactly. and the Western world the NATO and all of our citizens want a, a stable Middle East mm -hmm. and they want a partner who's going to help them. We don't want Iran to have a nuclear bomb and we don't want all of these countries to be as destabilized as they are. Yeah, so what yeah. are they going to do about all this? This is really scary right now because everything, well, because at one time Egypt, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll the, the, uh, we, they still have relations with e Egypt. They still have, uh, what is it that there is a piece of, uh, you know, that they have. The, yeah. uh, 
You mean the peace uh, yeah, the agreement? Peace that's they're they're the oh, they're trying to break that, yeah? The peace treaty. I mean, there's, you know, look what's happening all around. So APEC, what is APEC doing to help this? Is, are they they're in the forefront to help some of this? Uh, Their goal uh, is to go to Capitol Hill to create relationships with congressmen so that mm -hmm. they actually understand the issues. Mm -hmm. No congressman uh, can understand every single facet of American policy about everything, right? A congressman is a person. He or she has an expertise that they understand. Not every congressman who comes to the Hill automatically understands Middle Eastern politics. So what APAC does is a lot of education. They create relationships. They help explain a lot of what the situations are. And, and at, you know, at various different times, they're really able to mm -hmm. um, help congressmen understand, and most importantly, their staffers, so that when bills come before the Congress, when res resolutions come before the Congress, when there's a need for the Congress to influence policy, that they are ready to do so and they're equipped with all of the right information, and that when they don't have information, they actually have a relationship with APAC, and they call and they say, you know what? There's a bill coming down the line. I want to be able to support it. I don't really understand what to say. I know that this is the right thing, but I need some help. And therefore, they have this positive relationship. And we hope that a stronger Israel-America alliance will bring more peace and stability to the Middle Eastern region. Mm -hmm. It will make sure that less lives are lost um, and that democratic and pluralistic and wonderful American values are spread throughout that region. And I think that America has found that this partnership with Israel really has allowed them to do that. Right, and for those that are Christian viewers, I think it's important for them to know that Israel stands behind the Christian, you know, a lot of Christians well, are getting hurt, getting hurt in many of these different countries, sure. and they stand with the Christian, you know, people, Absolutely. because because a lot of the Christian people stand with Israel, and, uh, you know, Israel is not just for Israel, they're for, you know, like you said, they, they're, they, they're, help, they're, other they help other countries, they help other religions, they're there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you know, we had 13,000 delegates from 50 states coming to the convention. And 90 of them from our synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have two minutes. Do you want to say something to our viewers, Rabbi, to the last few words, you know, tell our viewers something that, um, you know, why you feel you're very, very supportive of uh, APAC and maybe that next at the next convention, which is going to be when? In March. In March. Mm -hmm. March 2nd, I yeah. believe. Mm -hmm. that it, it was kind First of a, week in March. Well, we don't have too much time because I see my credits rolling, but uh, it's an important, APEC is a very important organization, and... Um, you should come. You should come. I should come. Yes, yes, I would like to come. It's, it's um, wonderful. Everybody from any stripe of politics, any religion, is always welcome to come. Yeah, it's a and wonderful America organization. And America is for a relationship. That's what it's about. Right. It benefits both countries and the world. Exactly. And so as I'm wrapping up right now, I want to thank you, Rabbi. Thank you for having um, me. I, I want to thank Michael, Rabbi Michael Schwab and Annette Fowler. And to my pleasure. And, I, and I'm still going to be talking a few minutes, but I want to make sure that our our guest, you know, Rabbi is from the North Suburban Synagogue, Beth L. in Highland Park, Illinois, and our senior, one of our, and the feller who is our one of our senior, our crews from the senior producer crew and congregant. It was so nice to have and you a member. and member, um, um, both of them members of APAC, which is very important. Um, and, you know, any religion can be members of APAC. It's not just for Jewish people, it's for anybody right. that, you know, it's open to anybody. And because it's a growing I think that, segment of APAC's yes, population. Even the college students yeah. are involved in APAC. So they're getting it's wonderful people. education, yes. And they're mm -hmm. a, they're, you consider that a lobby group? Are they a lobby group APAC? for APAC? Um, part of what we are is a lobby group, and we're also an oh, educational yes. group. Um, we consider ourselves to be an advocacy group for, for Israel. So that's why the different Congress people come out, because it's not just lobbying, but it's also educating. It's educating people about Israel. It's ed educating people. It's educating people about democracy, what democracy is. And we do have a friendly country out there, Israel. And we never should forget they are our, the United States. They're hand in hand with the United States. Again, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show and educating our viewers about what APEC is and what APEC isn't. And really, thank you again for being on the show. It's a pleasure. And hopefully, it's I'm going to invite you back because I'd like to hear more about Israel in the future. And please join us at the convention. Welcome to the
Sim.